what's going on over there? I may appear disorganized, but there is logic behind my chaos. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot create fundamental change without a certain level of madness. And you see this madness I am talking about is non-conformity. The power to turn your back on the old formula and the courage to invent the future. So look at the person sitting next to you and tell that person you must be mad. When I say you are mad, it's an acronym for making a difference. My name is Daniel Wewele, when I was normal, I did not have money. But now that grace has entered my system, money don't enter. So pray to the God of grace to locate your inner madness so you can turn that madness into a money-making madness machine. This is BTS, and I'll be right back because my mic just fell off. Ha ha ha! Who is asking that question? You are telling me to tell you guys about myself. What else is there to say that you don't know already? I'm a million dollar, well, that's like a million dollar question rolled into one. I'm an angel, I'm a devil, I'm sometimes in between. I'm as bad as I can get, I'm as good as I can be. Sometimes I'm a million colors, sometimes I'm black and white, I am all extreme, I am perfect, I am a mess. Sometimes I make no sense. Hey, see me, lyrical messiah. I'm a rapist. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. You all know that I'm Derele and I've stuck with my name Derele. A lot of people wonder what Derele means. Well, the full name is Aderele, which is Ade, Unrele, which is what? The crown is going home. And where is home? BTS now. That's where I am right now. <laughs> Ade, crown, Unrele, home. Here, home. Pow. So I'm the first and only son. I got two younger sisters. I'm nationality confused. You see, my dad is Yoruba. Proper Niger man, Ogun State, Abel Kotalake, a bad boy. Then my mom's dad is Indian and her mom is from Mauritius, you know that exotic island near Madagascar. And I was born in Hamburg, Germany. So I me. Ever me bury. Bolati wa gongo at the mo. I shall not say I get green passport. So that makes me a patriotic, authentic Nigerian. Yes. Okay, so um very quickly, ah, I'm trying to wonder where I can start this from. Well, we got to Nigeria when I was about five, you know, and um my dad had a like an a conglomerate of businesses. My mom was a regular housewife. You know, Indian woman now, she did chief house, they comb by hair. They do Mary Terry Bani, Shole Shole. And then guess what? It was a reversal of fortunes. My dad lost everything. And we moved out of our mansion into an uncompleted building. My people, I lived in a building where breakfast, lunch, and dinner was cassava, ball cassava. I would scale the fence, jump into the next compound, which was a farm. Or put their cassava, bring it back and boil. We didn't have kerosene, we didn't have a stove, so we had to do coal pots and I had to fan it every day. And at that point, I was still trying to write my common entrance. My parents didn't have the money for that. So my mom took up a teaching job. It was hectic, you know. Shout out to my mother. Man, my mama now warrior. And that's where I think I get a lot of my strength and resilience from. But away from that, I got into secondary school. I would say that in 1994, some of you were not born at that point in time. That was when I officially started professional showbiz. I landed the lead role on a popular kiddie show called Kiddie Vision 101. If you remember, it is time for Kiddie Vision 101. Every Monday, 6.30, NTA. And I landed my first ever magazine cover. It was called TV Guide. They now put me in one small box. And then, you know, right under Reginaskia. But, you know, away from that, finished in 1997, secondary school. Now, see the cocoa. As I finished secondary school, now my family house, we can't move, enter. But all through secondary school, I stayed in my uncle's house. And in my uncle's house, I was the errand boy, the cleaner, the butler, the lesson teacher. I would wake up at 3 in the morning. The corridor of the house is like from the whole of this Admiralty way. I would sweep. After sweeping, you scrub. After scrubbing, you wipe. Then you now polish. My people, and I had to be going to secondary school from there. I remember they threw me out of that house one time. This was midnight when I was writing my junior work. They claimed that something went missing in the house. And man, I was brought up never to steal. I don't take what is not mine. But then they threw me out. I slept at the filling station. I was writing my junior work at Alagomeji bus stop. I showered at the car wash. And then, pa. I went to school and then I wrote my exams, five A's and six C's, with no help whatsoever. But then we moved into our family house in Yaba and that was the beginning of the tsunami problems that I see. If you stay in a family house and you are alive today, you are a testimony. I was the only boy in the house. Now every day then they beat me for the house. We'll be cleaning, sanitation, all my cousins will gather with cane. Ay, ay, ay. But guess what guys, I changed my narrative. I rewrote my family history, I broke barriers, I crossed hurdles, and here I am today. I started my hustle before the advent of the internet, way before social media. And you see, back then, if people don't like you, 
It's not what they do online now that, you know, you have faceless identities typing nonsense to my own. They will come and meet me and they will jack me. So my story is a story of, you know, resilience, determination, and I am a one-man army because I had no mentor, I had no guidance, I had nobody to put me right. And you see, I did not get the kind of regular childhood that everyone else had. At a very young age, I started working to also supplement the family. When I finished secondary school, I took up a teaching job. Should I bust your brain? The owner of that school is Joro, Olu Muffin's mom. I taught Joro. Hey, Joro, say I go put your hand. Now me write Joro report card. <laughs> Joro Olu Muffin, if you all know him, the you know, relationship experts and um, therapists online. He's an amazing friend of mine. It's so surprising that a lot of people's stories are just attached to mine. And you know, from then on, I got into Unilag. I managed because you know I used to do a lot of modeling, acting. That I, I used to dance for Rugged Man. I used to dance for Laura Cage. Laura Cage then wanted to be an actress because of Linda. I remember the dance because I'm L A U R A. Hmm. There are two ways to know your personality: one, the way you behave when you have everything, and two, the way you manage when you have nothing. Yes, I wanted to pin you down. Okay, so what do I do for a living? I think like I'm a potpourri of talents, an eclectic personality. I have my hands everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. I started with acting. And this is like proper screen acting. And then from acting, I moved to dancing. Then I got into full-time modeling. My people, you see the designers I used to model for back in the day. <laughs> no test or so. We will walk a wrong way. We will come out 100 times. They will now give us 1,000 for transport. I remember once, and then I, I will share this experience with you guys. We had a show at Tribes. Tribes is um, opposite 1004, inside that cactus building. You know, now, I mean, Tribes is extinct. But then we had a fashion show. The moment we finished, the designer escaped. Now all of us had to trek from that 1004 to Babbage so we could board the Bali Day bus. That's how Vigilante now caught us on the road. At 2 a.m., we now did frog jump. Oh, oh come and see frog jump. Me and that's like, me, actor. <laughs> yeah. My name is Sikuse. So they say I should not frog jump, but I should be walking. You know, a lot, and then, long story culture, we never got paid for that show. I remember so many brands I worked with, so many castings, so many auditions. There was even someone that I was dating that time. Okay, so I can open my hair, share. Now, my ex girlfriend, who is married now with twins, is um, one of the major presenters on Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. Now, back then, they used to call her Titi. Mm -mm, I'm not going to call the name of the drink. And I, I got um, rejected a lot of times because a lot of the um, agency directors liked my girlfriend. So they would say, ah, you want to bring that boyfriend? Remove him from the job and give it to her. So oh, back to from acting, dancing, modeling. I did runway and photography. And then presenting came calling. Surprisingly, I landed a job with the Sound City Music Channel in 2005. But when I joined, I was the lowest earner. Everybody was earning 120K. This was 2005. Me, I was, they, were earning, I was, they were giving me 45,000. And I was the errand boy. Go and buy food down there. Now, for this lucky year, I your Jagmo. Write this one script. At times, if we have some of the presenters traveling, we follow them to the airport and we bye bye. We'll now go to the office and be thinking of our life. But I said to myself, <laughs> You are underestimating this, they really are overestimating others. You are lying anybody. I am an unstoppable force of nature. I worked so hard, I built the red carpet show, and which is why we have the red carpet culture in Nigeria. Allow me to blow my trumpet. I revolutionized the red carpet movement in this country. Because what red carpet was complete without the red we started it. And I'm grateful to the fact that, you know, I got an opportunity with Sound City. From that 45K, hey! And I got to a point, it is not Jerry nobody else. I'll be in a country, they'll fly me down immediately because every brand wanted to work with Jerry My name became synonymous with the Sound City brand. It was hard work, my people. It was no joke. From that 45K to 120, from 120 to 200, I was ending the same with the brand manager. <laughs> but you know, these are experiences that have made me who I am today. So what do I really do in question? Just call me an entertainment entrepreneur. Extraordinaire. Yes. The only work I have not done is blue film. I cannot do blue film. What inspires my style? Growing up, now only two shirts and three jeans I get to. At the point I started wearing my school uniform to church because we couldn't afford, I couldn't afford clothes. I remembered going to church one day. I wanted to iron my khaki shorts and then the iron was hot. Now I now it. I said, hey! 
Where I won't see money buy uniform. So I had to patch it. And I remember going to church that day and everybody was laughing at me, you know. I even remember, you know, uh, my cousins used to say like, we're like the poorest Oimbo people they've ever seen before. That, you know, when they see half caste kids, you know, mixed race, that they're like, you know, affluent. And then we are like the, ah, jeez. You know, when you think of those times. So I made a pact to myself that I was going to take my family to the next level. And I made sure that my mother traveled back and I took care of my sister still dates. My sisters are my responsibility, my dad is my responsibility. I am only about my close family. I'm a man of many responsibilities though. Don't let all these uh, clothes and hair and things fool you. I'm a disciplinarian. You see my sisters, if I enter a club and my sisters are in that club, one that they will run home. If I catch them, you see that we've won, I'll first go. And they, I used to do with my sisters, 3 a.m. when they are sleeping, I'll just... Once they wake up, eh? What are you doing? Uh -huh. So, once they start hyping, I'm Beverly Osu then. Back then, you know, Beverly is a big girl now. Beverly Osu and my sisters. Once they announce in the club, they're relaying the building, they'll pass it back and run. Eh? So, please, eh, as much as I look wild, flamboyant, and all over the place, I'm a family man. Anyway, what inspires my style? Fashion unites us, but style, you know, separates us. Everyone can buy fashion, but style you have to own. Fashion is in the clothes, style is in the wearer. For me, style is an expression of individualism mixed with charm. No, let me put it this way. Style is when they are running you out of town, but you make it look like you are leading the parade. I wear what I want to wear because I like it. I look in the mirror. If you don't like it, go and jump over third mill and beach. Matter of fact, I've gotten to a point now where I'm comfortable with anything I wear. Why do I wear the shoes that I wear? The higher the shoes, the closer to heaven. Now, Papa God, they answer my prayer pass now. You wear the wear slippers. What's going on with you? Leave me and my apple now. Eh. <laughs> Well, just kidding, guys. And then why my hair is this way? The food I eat goes to my hair. As you can see, I am one who come with a SIM card. What inspires my style one more time? Um, life in general. <clears throat> beauty. I find inspiration in beauty and chaos at the same time. And I fuse it together. Bam! And here we are. Let me move my... You know I'm left-handed now, so we'll move it to the left side. Eh, uh -huh. Oh, yeah. So now the question here is, I've done a lot for the industry, how does that make me feel? Guess what? My body of work, my portfolio of work is the most underrated in this country. It's undermined because, you see, I know where I'm coming from. You know my name, not my story. You see what I do, but you don't know what I've been through. My portfolio of work is not just today. And let me tell you the best part about my brand and my identity. I'm not in a particular industry. Media. Ah, I'm everybody's friend. Movies, I'm everybody's friend. Screen, I'm everybody's friend. Fashion, modeling, beauty, skincare, you name whatever entertainment industry it is, I am found there. And I think it's made me eclectic and very versatile. Yeah. But what do I think about my body of work? You see, it's dating back from 1994. Tales by Moonlight, if you remember Tales by Moonlight. Um, speak out, speak out for the world to get speak out. Kiddie Vision 101, which of course brought me to Limelight, um, After the Storm, a lot of other kiddie shows. And then fast forward to, you know, the lineup of other things I tried my hands at. But you see, because this is the digital age, I'm constantly, my work is put on a level that I'm constantly always compared to a lot of people. So I would like to say that as individuals in the industry, as showbiz personalities, don't look for validation. Just do your work, do it, and just work out. Enter your house, close your door, and rest. Yay! Who inspires me? Who's inspired? First things first. Hi. One person who I have picked something from is the ageless media messiah herself, Fumi Oda. You see, growing up, we had a black and white TV. That TV get scoin scoin. It will be doing paka paka. So you have to beat it. Bah! That's the TV I could afford to buy second hand. You will beat it before it will settle. But if you settle for five minutes, you now start doing big, 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 big. But every time that uh, Fumi Oda show came on in the morning, it always stayed. So I kind of learned, you know, I watched the Fumi Oda show so much. I was inspired by it. And I, growing up, I said, ah, I would love to meet Fumi Oda. That time I did also, they don't let me see her more. I'll go to NTA video. See, she's busy. She can't see you. So I said to myself, I will work so hard that they will invite me on the show. When I started working with the Sound City Music Channel, I went on the Fumi Oda show four times. Yes, another person that I totally respect for his consistency and longevity and his authenticity is the one and only eh? Charlie Boy, Charlie Oputa. Yeah, they say I'm a home wrecker. That I'm the one that destroyed his marriage. Eh, by me. Ha. 
They say I'm kissing Charlie Boy up and down. Go and look at that picture properly and you understand how the media dealt with me. Hey! No. Well, that's life. You learn the hard way. Charlie Boy is amazing. I remember I used to dance for Charlie Boy's wife. Lady D. This is shocking. So I went to his house in Bagada for a rehearsal. We we're supposed to perform at um, Silverbed TV's, I think, 35th anniversary or something. So like 15, 20 years ago. And then Charlie Boy saw me. Ah, young man, come here. When I saw him, I was ah, see he, he's going to send me out of his house. I was double in. He said, you know, you inspire me. I wish I started out your age when I was younger. I was very inspired and honored by that. I was like, wow, coming from the Charlie Boy himself. You know, and then, I mean, there are a lot of wonderful people that I look up to in the industry, that I respect their work, that, um, you know, their influence matters a lot. Another person that I admire, and like, she sent me clothes for me, and I'm still in shock. You, you know, I remember waiting Regina Askia do that time. Ah! Regina Askia, if she did inside film, we'll rush to go and buy it. The first I ever saw Regina Askia, I was shaking. Hey, 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 I was starstruck. You know, she's such an amazing friend of mine. I like people who give you free will to express your individuality you know and you showcase your personality and you're not afraid to be you as i say your story is important your voice matters your life is important be you love yourself value yourself the world needs you i don't talk up of course are you kidding me they're always insulting me every day every day <laughs> Somebody recently said something about, oh, they really go and change your style. We're bored. You should have evolved by now. You're boring us, blah, blah, blah. You know, and you see, to be very candid, I know that if I was in Hollywood, I would be on the Hall of Fame. Because why? I don't think this country deserves me. That's the honest truth. I'm a rock star in my head, but you know, Nanaija it is, so it's fine. I'll make it work. But um, I think the kind of confrontations you're talking about here, or maybe... I don't have upfront confrontations with people. Let me tell you why. People don't know. Don't use shoe or hell. Don't be deceived. I'm a black belt. If I karate kick you with high heel, you will fly. So I think that it's best that people that say things about me don't come and meet me up front because I will see. I will be defense speaking. I will beat you. And you know that kind of beating it? I will break a bone. Don't be, don't, don't, don't be flawed by my effeminacy. I mean, see, eh? I be man. I get block calls. Forget all this high heel and hell. If I enter streets, and I grew up in the meta, so I'm a proper Ibutimeta, but I don't fight for gang before. It will shock you. Yes. So, okay. So away from that, I think that um, I've not had open confrontations with people because I am not one to fight and I'm not violent. So I, I don't want people to know that side of me. You shouldn't, you know. And that's the side that I've pushed, you know. My angry side is in the past. But I've had a lot of people insult me on social media so much, you know, and these are people that I don't even know personally. You know, they come out and they say all kinds, they rubbish you. But you know, those opinions are not my reality because my awesomeness cannot be beaten down by your bitterness. The only time I would say that I've dealt with somebody and, you know, that when I took it upon myself was when I was working with the Sound City Music Channel. There was an artist that was very rude to me. And I heard that he had a habit of being rude to effeminate people. <laughs> I treated his it's, I called every music station in Lagos to delete his video, which they did. I will get to that, don't worry. Deleted his music video. The day he came to our office for an interview, I said he wants to do an interview in the magazine that I'm the publisher in chief. You are wasting your time. Now, I'm not saying that I was trying to be violent or vindictive. No. But you see, do not feel that you can take advantage of people because they might seem weak. No, 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 no. I don't like that. And that's why I constantly fight for people. You see, um, I'll just use a quick example. When James Brown had that incident, and I'm just saying it for the first time on camera, when the whole day didn't cut me, I woke the NGO that bailed everybody out. I'm just saying it for the first time here. I've never told him, he doesn't need to know. When he granted an interview, I heard he insulted. Mm, me Omori. You know, so the thing is that, there's a lot that goes down that you don't really need to know or people don't need to know. I don't need to have confrontations. I don't need to come and tell James Brown. You don't know that I'm even the one that's even rescued you from that something. Because we paid quite a large sum of money. But that's away from that. It was just the fact that I saw his plight. And I was like, why would they do this? Because they said they saw this sort of guys, effeminate guy dancing in a party. Nah! No, that's injustice at the highest order. Nah! 
and I will constantly fight for people that, that don't have a voice and need to be fought for. So, back to that artist in question. Let me just say that the artist cannot sing again because I made the record label drop him. Don't try me, bro. I'm a silent fighter. I think I'm looking for a scapegoat in this Lagos very soon. And this time around, my people, it's not it's open competition. It will be on the streets of Lekki. We'll beat ourselves. Bam. You think you can fight? It's not only karate. Taekwondo is there and judo is there too. You just kidding. <laughs>
we're going to keep getting the international exposure that we deserve. But I think that the government is slowly eyeing the industry and their past um, regimes have funded entertainment. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I know of that. But now I think that there is a constant, there's a tilt, there's a shift now, you know, there's a shift in the paradigm. And I think that, you know, investments are coming in. So fingers crossed everybody. Let's see how it goes. What's the one thing on my mind? I think that models are underpaid in this country. A model, will, now let me tell you what a Nigerian model goes through. You go for castings, you get on the runway, you come out 30 times, they'll pay you 10K. But if an international model comes and comes out only once, they'll pay the international model $10,000. $10,000 to $10,000. Ah, she ain't sharing. Ha! I think that, um, if anything, models deserve like you know they deserve better pay they deserve better working conditions they deserve recognition look at my one nicolas working for victoria's secret our own niger model now it can be alien aye but when she was in Nigeria, the pain her thank you for wrong way back then back in the day so i think that the modeling industry needs a revamp you know i like what a lot of people are doing elizabeth all of bet models um auntie john okoro dude of isis a couple of people um uche of um oh, i've forgotten this agency you know a lot of people are doing great things for models but it's not enough and then what more can i say oh yes to all my people always be a first class version of yourself and not a second class version of somebody else listen to learn but have we even learned to listen learn to listen no. i brand tv i for industrious b for brilliant r for resilient a for uh, what's what's that word accommodating N for <laughs> never relenting and D for diligent. I brand TV, ladies and gentlemen, in your faces, too much is never enough. This is a brand that is socially upgraded, mentally challenging, and aesthetically appealing. And of course, my name remains they really, we really, they weary. She weary, cause I'm a she weary law ain't me. Life is too short. And remember, to craze they easy, na the trekking they hard. And of course, at I brand TV, when we're celebrating our values, we talk about what? We are a promise of quality, consistency, longevity, and self-definition to our clients. iBrand TV, take it away. Putting a full stop at the top spots. That's why I live.